Video number six of this 1913 Duesenberg cycle car build. Today we're going to build this sweet drop front floor, five inch drop from a standard frame. So let's show you how we did it. Okay, so we're laying out the floor. Um, I'm using my cycle car as kind of a template for this and because it, it fits pretty well and works pretty well. So this floor, uh, the bottom of this little one by right here, uh, is eight inches from the top of this frame rail back here where the axle's at. So works out to, uh, after you subtract the three inch on the frame, it's a five inch drop from the frame. A little less because this is a drop frame here, uh, but from the standard frame, it's a five inch drop. Uh, now I do bottom out a little bit when going on the trailers and things like that, but it's not a huge deal. And it does get your body down low because once you add a seat and seat padding, it brings you up another couple inches. So the important thing is to get your body down as low as you can and uh, to be comfortable. So this has a slight slope going forward of about an inch from the back of the slope. So I got a clamp on there to the front. And I got these bricks sitting here to kind of simulate where the floor is going to be when you sit in it and put your feet on the feet are going to be roughly here the, the, where the shackles go. This is about where your pedals are going to be at. And then I've got bricks sitting here to simulate the floor of the, of the cart. Um, this is almost at right height. So with these jack stands, I'm an inch above right height. So it's pretty close. It's still going to give us four or five inches of ground clearance. So it's plenty. Uh, what we have to do first before we can do the floor, or I can actually do the floor, but to install the floor. Uh, up here, in front of the shackle bolt, if I were to put the aluminum panel all the way across here, all the way back to the and all the way down, um, the spring, because it's an inch and a quarter wide, would actually interfere with it. So as the spring goes through its motion, it would impact the floor. So we have to space this out about a half an inch. Uh, last time I just put some half inch metal welded it on here and this will be riveted to the floor, the drop floor piece too. That works out pretty well. That's what we'll just do again in this one. Um, simple is always better with these things, so don't try to complicate it. Uh, don't need to make a bunch of bends. We're just gonna, you know, this will be one piece of aluminum from here back, another piece of aluminum from here forward uh, for, the for the drop part. The floor will all be one piece because I got a big enough sheet of, of uh, aluminum to do that, so there won't be any joints in the floor, but this will have a small joint here, which is no big deal because that's where your shackle's at anyway. It's gonna be broken. Uh, or cut here anyway, so your shackles, um, you see on this side, that's where the shackle goes. So the inside of this, the aluminum can be cut right there, and then the other piece spaced in slightly so that this spring will clear it as it goes through it. Because the floor ends up down here by where my hand is at. Um, you can make the floor shallower, it won't be a problem, but we want the feet, it's a little uncomfortable sitting uphill, um, having your feet elevated above your butt. Anyway, that's the idea, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I got these welded on both sides. These worked out to be about seven inches long. Uh, gives plenty of clearance for the spring shackle. And once the spring goes through its motion, it will not hit the floor. The floor, of course, will have to be notched a little bit at the front. But we're gonna do that from back here to get this, uh, excuse me, from back here, there'll be, a, the, the, there'll be a clearance area here for the floor for the spring shackle and the bolt to travel up and down without interfering. And uh, this is gonna work out great. So there we go, we got a good start on it. Now it's time to cart, start cutting up some aluminum. Okay, so here's our sheet of aluminum. This has a white plastic coating on one side. It's four feet by 10. Uh, when you handle this stuff, make sure you use gloves. The edges are a little bit as cut from the factory, so they're not deburred. Um, this is 50 thousandths thick, grade 50, oh, I always forget this. Let me look at the receipt. 5052 aluminum. So this is great for flat sheets, 90 degree bends, maybe making a radius like a hood piece. Uh, not good for compound curves. You want the 3003 grade for that. This stuff is just too rigid. Um, uh, my first cycle cart build, I used this same product to make my tail section. And yeah, you can shape it, but it is about, oh, 50 to 100, maybe 100% harder than the 3003 as far as getting a compound curve in it, getting it to stretch and shrink. So this is just going to be used for the floor, the sides, uh, probably the hood sides and the hood itself. And we'll have a little bit of extra. Uh, this is about 30 pounds of material, 27.9 according to the sheet here. Cost about 120 bucks for the sheet. Um, didn't have to get the whole sheet, but I didn't know how much we were gonna need for sure. And last time I did this, I bought multiple sheets. So it's easier to just get one at one time and be done with it. So this way the floor can all be one piece. Sometimes I get a four foot by four foot sheet, but then the floor, because it's bigger than that, requires a two piece floor. So this is gonna be great having a one piece floor. 
All right, so let's get marking this thing and cutting. Okay, so I've got a little piece of wood underneath it just to get this up off the ground because it was sitting on the ground. So when you cut this, you're gonna lose about a quarter inch of material at the blade. Um, so I'm gonna cut on the left side of the line, basically. Try to keep the center right on the center of the blue line. So there you go, four foot long, seven and a half inches. I just gotta trim an inch off the end to make it fit. So I'm gonna trial fit it first just to make sure it looks right. Okay, I didn't film every little step, but I cut all the panels. Uh, there's six panels all together. Um, and I had a little mental boo-boo. Um, when I measured these front panels, I forgot that they are basically an inch and a half higher than these panels. So what we're going to do instead of having this offset where this comes across flat, and, then, and it has this big kind of step here. If you can see, there's a kind of an offset. Um, come to the other side. I'm just going to angle that panel and have it basically come together up here by the shackle. So this is going to be angled. You can see there's a space here. So after I get the bottom bent, I, oh, sorry, my fingers in the way. After I get all this bending done tomorrow, um, we're going to mock it up again. Bend them, make sure that, and kind of figure out where they're going to go exactly. And then we're going to mark the backs and then cut them. Uh, so I'm sure the other side of this, you can see what, how much I'm talking about cutting. It's just this little bit. So once I mark it, we can just trim that down. And so that way this thing gently slopes. I don't know if you can see the slope or not. From the back to the front. And so that's what the box will look like. So it just has a gentle slope of about an inch and a half from the very back to the very front. Um... So anyway, all the panels are seven and a half inches and I should have made the front panels longer to accommodate for the Z. But actually it's probably gonna work out better this way at a little bit of an angle. I think that'll be more attractive as far as the eye goes and, and looking at this from the sides. And uh, so that's all for this moment. Tomorrow we'll get it bent. We get it bent, we'll get it screwed in place temporarily and then we'll build the floor. All right, got them all bent, nice 90 degrees. This is the machine I use, the 10 foot brake. Yeah, my uh, foam manufacturing plant, where I work. Anyway, thanks to the boss for letting me use the machine. Okay, so we got home with the metal after getting it bent at my office, and thanks to my office for letting me use a big, long sheet metal bender. So we got it bent, and my dad came over this afternoon, and we just thrashed this thing. I started installing it. So we've got rivet holes drilled. I haven't drilled them all the way through, but uh, every two inches, Every three inches on top, and we staggered them. Now you can do it however you want. If you want to line them up, you know whatever makes sense to you for appearance. Um, we ended up going and sloping it from the back to the front. We got about an inch and a half slope from the front to the back, from where it starts to the back to goes to the front. I think that's going to work pretty well. So the floor will be flat. Um, I went ahead and bent this little piece right here. You can see it better on this side. So it covers up that little offset. We put a little half inch piece of offset up here to accommodate the room for the springs to travel. Uh, the spring travel otherwise it would hit the bottom of your floor as it travels up and down so that's the goal on that i may have to clear this just a little bit right here still um so right now i'm using clecos and little self-drilling screws to hold these things in place as we mock it up because you're going to take it in and out a whole bunch of times uh, in fact i still got to take this out and drill all these holes uh, on both the side panels so we'll do that next and then it's going to be uh, time to cut the floor so that's coming up Okay, so I thought I'd take a minute and show you how I mark these out. So I'm going, I, what I did was I just, uh, as I had this mocked up, I put a uh, marker, Sharpie marker along the back side of the frame, and then I went three quarters of an inch up and I drew a line at the bottom and a line at the top. And then I'm going every three inches, um, starting from this far end, I'm putting one an inch in both on both of them. And then starting from there, we're going over an inch and a half, I think it is to here, and then th every three inches. And then down here, what we did was staggered them in between the upper ones. So it kind of looks like it's a zigzag pattern, uh, if that makes sense as we go down. So each of those little hash marks will be a drill hole. And that keeps it nice and neat because this will be visible probably on the inside of the cart. And this morning I decided to do something before I mount these. Let me show you. I decided to put a gusset on the inside of the frame rail. So if you recall before, this looked... Sorry, there's a thing rolling around like that, basically, where all these uh, gussets are put in there, the little pieces 
welded in in a previous video. And I decided I should gusset this. I thought, well, there's no cross member here, so I decided I just, I just took a piece of, uh, I think this is 1 16th inch thick, just basically the same thickness as the uh, tubing is, 0 0.063 thickness, and welded that in. I put it on both sides, and when the aluminum in there, you can't really see it. It hides it pretty well. It's hidden in here, so it kind of smooth it out, so it doesn't really, you can't really see it. But it's there, it gives me a peace of mind uh, to know that's a little bit stronger. And in that regard, also the front, I decided to strengthen these welds. I, I kind of ground these down, and I thought maybe it took off a little too much material. So I put a little more welding on there, smoothed it down, and we'll take a little body filter to smooth those out. Um, I was afraid those would break off. That's just a washer on there. And I really wanted some more material to attach it to the, the side of the frame there. So that was the idea of that. Anyway, things are coming together. I'm going to go ahead and draw all those holes, get this thing mounted, and we'll get the floor made. Okay, so massive progress here. Got the floor cut and fit. Uh, you know, I took some careful measurements and I still had to trim off quite a bit off both sides. It was a little bit wider. Um, I'm not sure exactly. Maybe just a lack of care in taking measurements, but that seems to fit pretty good. So this will get, the front of this will kind of pull in together to close those gaps up a little bit. See, there's a little bit of a gap there. They pull that in. Um, when, we, when we go to rub the floor in, we'll accommodate that. I got a clearance a little bit right here. I've marked, and that turned out pretty good. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. So now I'm going to pull, I've, I've gone underneath it and I took a marker around all the edges to show me where the other uh, panels go. So now I'm going to pull it out, mark where the rivets are going to go, or drill out the rivets and get this thing bolted in. Hey guys, thanks for watching video 6 of the 1913 Duesenberg cycle cart frame build. Uh, we got the floor all done, uh, everything's drilled out, ready to go. Um, I guess the next step is maybe put our front axle in. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. We'll get, the, get this thing on its wheels soon, get the steering system figured out. And um, this came to a really pretty well. It took me about a week to work on this, you know, just some afternoons and uh, some help from my dad. So got it pretty well squared away. And uh, see you on the next one.